For weeks, ESCOM ramped up power cuts to levels we had rarely seen before, the dreaded Stage 6. And they were clear, the possibility of Stage 8 was always looming. Looming like a dark, depressing cloud over all of us, might I just add. Well, this week, some good news at last for consumers, a policy shift to allow independent suppliers to add more watts to the grid and help alleviate load shedding. But over in Cape Town, it seems they were always ahead of the curve. I have a lot of social media apps on my phone, but lately I feel like I check my load shedding app more than any of them, constantly checking the schedule. It's been a pretty grim few weeks, never knowing when the lights would be on. And when ESCOM warned stage eight was expected, you can imagine what a nightmare it was for Cape Town Mayor Jordan Hill Lewis. Stage eight is a real nightmare scenario. All of our city services, things like water stations, water purification stations, sewage pump stations, all of our electricity substations would run out of battery. They wouldn't have enough time to recharge. Your cell phone towers would run out of battery. There's very little that we could have done about it to save residents in Cape Town from a real, real catastrophe. But this week, the whole picture changed with President Cyril Ramaphosa's family meeting. The crisis that we are facing requires that we should take bold, courageous and decisive action to close the electricity gap in our country. In one foul swoop, he ended ESCOM's monopoly on power production, lifting the limits on those municipalities that can afford to buy power from independent producers. For energy specialist Vincenzo Bellini, it's been a very good week. It's a huge game changer. What it's doing, it's enabling the industry to do what the industry wants to do, and that is supply energy. But as importantly, it's also enabling businesses to flourish and the economy to flourish and allows the economy and the businesses to choose where they want to buy their power from and how much they want to pay. I was shocked to discover that throughout this whole crisis, Cape Town has had less load shedding than the rest of the country. It's something that many Cape Townians may not even know. It's all because of this high mountain and a 40-year-old hydro pump station at Steenbrass Dam, which has been kept in excellent condition. This is the ace up Cape Town sleeve. Basically put, this hydro pump station is the reason why Cape Town is experiencing load shedding to a lesser degree than the rest of the country. It's a simple process. Water is released from the top dam, driving four turbines to generate power for Cape Town in morning and evening peak periods. At night, it's pumped back to the top, ready for the next day. Every stage of load shedding costs Cape Town 75 million rand per stage per day. So 75 get... million rand per... per stage per day. So we can protect Cape Town from two stages, which means we can save the Cape Town economy from 150 million rand in losses every day. Since becoming mayor, he's been on a mission for the city to take matters into its own hands and break its dependence on ESCOM. In June, they began the process of commissioning power from independent producers. Our singular obsession is making up that load shedding gap, and that is about four to 500 meg megawatts. The city of Cape Town has played a pivotal role in a drawn-out legal battle which finally allowed municipalities to buy and generate their own power. Now, the president has lifted the remaining restrictions and promised to simplify the legislation. Does this mean that the legislation will also change and ease up and it won't be as bogged down as it was before? So there's already been an announcement by the Department of Environmental Affairs that they are going to cut down on the environmental um, processing times. And now with the president bringing all the departments together to form this one-stop shop, it's going to take their preparation from three years, possibly down to about six months. So I hope it sends a very clear message to NURSA in particular that the registration process should be a matter of days, not weeks, not months, and certainly not years. It sends a message to the Minister of Energy that he should not stand in municipalities and cities' ways who are trying to do this. There's no need for ministerial permission. We can get on with it. We're all fed up with high electricity prices and load shedding, and anyone who can afford to install a solar system is doing so. Some are even selling excess power back to the city. It's known as small-scale embedded generation, 
SSEG. Businessman Michael McLachlan sells excess power back to the city from his home and shopping center. This uh, complex generates about 40% of what it consumes. And we also do push back into the grid um, a small amount when in non-peak times, which means that we get about a 43% savings off our electricity bill. Could you tell us how the tariffs work? Uh, I mean, obviously tariffs differ between different residential and commercial. Our tariff here is currently approximately two rand per kilowatt hour that we consume. When we feed back into the grid, they pay us back approximately one rand per kilowatt that we feed back into the grid. In the past, business had to consume more electricity than they sold. This week, the mayor announced that the city was lifting those restrictions. There's no limit on the amount of power that you can produce in Cape Town. We will take as much as you can give us. We'll EFT it to you, we can e-wallet it to you if you want. We'll send you cash for the power you send us. The president now even made it possible for ESCOM to buy small-scale solar-generated power from independents. Overnight, it's made private solar generation a viable commercial option. While we wait for renewable energy power plants to come online, these rooftop systems potentially represent immediately accessible power for the city of Cape Town. And there's a growing number of them across town. Tony Sutter is the head of facilities management at the Mammoth Old Mutual Park in Pinelands. Their electricity bill was 48 million rand a year before they installed solar. And to date, it saved them 17 million rand. For the moment, they don't have excess power to sell. The recent announcements by the Cape Town Mayor and the President, how does that change things for you long term? That gives us another opportunity to produce significantly more. On our, on our carbon reduction strategy, the announcement really strengthens that business case, not just from a carbon business, but, but it gives us a strong commercial business case where we can sell the overproduced energy back onto the grid. But after the Mayor's announcement, they decided to put a whole solar field on land nearby. Cape Town is piloting something known as wheeling. It's where a business can buy electricity directly from a power producer using the city or ESCOM's grid. What still needs to be threshed out are the tariffs to use the grid. Most people think Cape Town's a tourist destination. If it had more wheeled energy, it would be more attractive for international investors. It would be more attractive for factories to set up shop here. The economy would really flourish with more energy being available, which can only be achieved through wheeling. What would you say the city's energy mix would look like in the next five years? We're going to take from a lot of different strands. We're going to take a little bit from SSEG. We're going to take quite a lot from independent power producers. We're going to get some storage. All together, that mix is going to add up to us being about 20% self-reliant. And that is enough to end load shedding. Remember, that is our goal. It's been an exciting week, and the mother city is ready to share its plans. It sounds like we can finally smell there's like light at the end of the tunnel. There's light at the end of the tunnel. It's not an oncoming train, and the president made a fundamental shift to liberalizing the market. Thank you for watching our stories here online, and please subscribe below to become part of our YouTube community and be notified when we upload our latest content.